All right. It's, uh, it's 1 o'clock. If we got folks in the hallway, anybody who was old time uh, up at First Baptist, you know, folks in the hallway. All right. Anybody else? Come on in. Uh, we're, we normally you start off the things with singing and all that music and all that playing and all that kind of thing, but we've got groups that from different places and don't know each other and all those kind of things. So um, in about an hour we're going to. Well, first of all, I guess I'll tell you who I am. Yeah, who? I'm Bob Hooker, the pastor of this church here. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, so thank you all for coming. I'll be, I'll be saying a few other things, but uh, here in just a moment, we're going to do a little bit of singing. Hold on a second. You'll find out that uh, we're going to be pretty relaxed, so first thing I want you to do is just relax, okay? Some of you, as I greeted you coming in, some of you looked a little nervous, all right? Because you're, you're, you've moved out of your comfort zone. Okay. Well, I love this. You're not even listening to me already. <laughs> That's incredible. Are you cool enough in here? So we need to drop it about five degrees. All right. Let me just uh, tell you a few things, and uh, we're, we're going to start it out just a little bit different than you normally would a, a thing like this, because uh, we're really, uh, we're absolutely, we're not here to try to impress you. Couldn't do that. We're not here to perform for you. Couldn't do that. We're, we are, we are going to do things absolutely. The singing, everything that we do is going to be completely different than we normally do it in our services. Uh, just We just want to enjoy, and uh, we're going to sing a lot. I think that's very important. Um, but most of all, I just I thank you because a lot of you came a long ways, and I want to I tell you I appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate you coming and uh, taking the time. I hope it's an encouragement to you while you're here. I really do. I hope it's something that'll be a blessing to you. I hope you learn how to turn your phone off. Um, <laughs> God bless you. Hey, man, don't you love it? And so um, uh, start off, I want to you understand we're not, we're not people that think we have all the answers. That's not why we're doing the conference. Uh, we're just, uh, we're people that we found out that there's somebody that does have all the answers. And we're trying our best to seek him, trying our best to get to know him. And um, hopefully we can all grow closer to him while we're here for these this, uh, 24, 25 hours. Uh, we're, we're not experts, but rather a group of people that saw a need in our own singles and um, had a desire to do what we could with God's help to help them. And we have you know, several in our, quite a few actually in, a, in our own church. And we started just kind of wanted to do something for them and it sort of expanded into this, and, um, and so we want to help you all. You'll find out in the next 24 hours that, that we're not perfect, if you haven't found that out already. Uh, I know that some of you, you're probably looking right now and you're thinking, no, nah, I can tell by looking at you that y'all are, uh, but no, we're not. You'll find out in the next, we're not perfect, you'll find that uh, everything won't run like clockwork. Um, because uh, one reason is we desire that God runs it. And so we'll flex, we'll move, we'll change, we'll do whatever uh, is feel like the Lord wants us to. The other reason is uh, we're not talented enough to do it that way anyway. So, so um, after this hour, we'll have a meet and greet. When you do that, I really want you again, relax, go ahead, meet each other, get to know each other, uh, do all that kind of good stuff. I look forward to meeting some of you that I've never met before, don't really know, and some of you I'm getting reacquainted with, and uh, sadly at this point in my life, a lot of you are the children of the people I did know. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so we have a, a room directly behind us. If you didn't see it when you came in, didn't have time, it directly behind us is our, well, normally our senior saints. We call it our Merry Hearts Club. Uh, they're normally back there. It's a fairly large room, and that's our coffee shop, snack shop. You can get lattes. You can get espressos. You can get whatever. They're all going to taste the same, but you can get whatever you want. No, you can get whatever you want back there and uh, get some snacks, things like that. So in the breaks, you can do that. 
Uh, also, we have uh, a book table, some of uh, our family's material. If you're not familiar with them, our daughters, we have six daughters, and uh, they've been singing since I think made their first CD in 97. And CDs, you know, it used to be we'd say albums, and you didn't know what those were. Now you don't know what CDs are, but. But, um, but anyway, we've got some of those. We've got some books back there. We, we kind of researched and tried to find other books that would be a help uh, to especially your kind of your age, your category. And so those are back there. I just want to, I do want to say this though. Uh, in our, uh, we are King James people. Uh, and so the books back there, uh, they're, most of those uh, books back there are going to be solely King James, and here's what I want you to know. The others, there's some that we've tried to scan through. They were referred to us. We scanned through and tried to make sure that they were good. They may have another version, uh, you know, at times in there. Uh, what we've seen is uh, a lot of good material, but I, and I'm not a proponent of, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. I'm really not that because I'm afraid you do too much of that, you're going to choke on the bones. And so, but I, but I will say this, I think if you search, if you decide that you want to look at one of those, they're marked that they have another version in it. And so if you can know that before you even pick it up and you say, man, I don't want that, then I, let me help you. Here's how, don't pick it up. Um, and so maybe it'll be a help to you. Uh, I prefer, I wish we had more material out there that was just King James. Uh, but we, you know, we're, we're limited on what we have. So uh, you can look at that, but it will be a sticker on it. And I just say, you know, just, you know, if you, uh, and, and honestly, we've tried to go through them. A lot of these, when well, all of these were recommended to us in one way or the other, we've tried to go through them, scan through them, read through them, things. Now, if there's anything, if you find something that, that's not, not good, then, then um, it's not because we didn't try to search it out and see. So, all right. Now, uh, for the next 24 hours, here's what I want you to have this philosophy about everything we do, and then we're going to get started. Uh, Philippians 4.8. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. When I went to, I was 26, almost 27, went to Bible college. I was a police officer before, and then that, uh, for a short time, about 13, 14 months, I was in a business, had about 125 employees, and, um, and I went to, to Bible college. And I'll be honest with you, from athletics, from everything that I'd ever done in my life, I, I only would learn from somebody that I thought virtually was perfect. You know I mean, when I saw an error, I just looked away said, okay, you know, they're not what I thought they were. They failed. Uh, in sports, it was like that. If a guy, you know, I thought, man, he was really good, but then I saw he, you know, he made, he had problems or had weakness. I looked away. When I went to Bible college, I began to do the same thing. And I, and then one day I was out, I didn't know much about soul winning. A guy took me out and you know, three weeks in a row, went out with three different guys. They were training me. And one guy went out with, and we sat for an hour in the, in the car and prayed before we went soul winning. And I thought, man, I thought we were supposed to go soul winning. Don't know what it is, but I thought we were supposed to go. But we sat in the, in the, in the car for an hour and prayed. The next week, I uh, went out with a guy. And, and uh, you know, again, you know, he did some things that I thought you know, didn't make sense to me. And, and uh, so I kind of tuned him out. And then... Uh, following week, I went with a guy, and he just, um, there was a guy that got real argumentative, and, and, you know, I came from, you know, I was learning, I was a boxer, I was a football player, I was all this, and when they got argumentative, then I normally did back, if you know what I mean. So, uh, but he didn't, boy, he just, he just calmed the whole situation and just kind of smoothed it up and walked away, and he said, you always need to leave the door open, and. And I thought, man, I don't understand that. You know, I want to smack the dude. And uh, so about three weeks into it, God brought me to this verse. I didn't know much about the Bible when I went to Bible college, and I, and I still don't, I guess. But, but I, I got to this verse, and here's what the Lord told me. Everybody's got something for you to learn. If you want to look for the good instead of looking for the, the weakness. We're going to show you weaknesses here. You may not agree with everything that we do or how we do it. 
and like I said, most of what we're going to do, a lot of what we're going to do, we don't even normally do it this way in our own church service. But I, I just ask you to do this. Look for the good. Get something that will help you while you're here. Is that okay? All right. And, uh, hey, look, I know a lot of you don't know me, but as soon as you get to know me, you will love me. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we're going to sing some songs, and then we're going to do this at the beginning of every session. We're going to, I'm going to have everybody stand, and we're, and we're going to sing several songs, one after the other, for several minutes. I'm going to have Brother Jeremy and, and Miss Bell come up and help me out. I don't know all these songs perfectly, so they're going to help me out with that. And they're also going to help you if you don't know that song well. Some of the songs you'll know well. Some of the songs may be a, a new song for you. And then also we have several scripture songs. You may not know the actual song, but you'll know the scripture. And uh, so we're going to sing those songs together. So feel free to sing if you know it. If you don't, go ahead and learn it, and we'll kind of go. We'll kind of feel it as we go. Here we go. We're first going to sing because he lives. Not the whole song, just the chorus. We're going to sing it several times to begin. Because he lives. future holds some of you do have cares but he lives and life is worth living because he lives let's sing that again because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone sing a song now called Here I Am to Worship. You may not know this song as well. You may know it well. Let's sing this song together. Here I Am to Worship. Yeah. 
comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 22 wherefore thou art great O Lord God this scripture in our minds. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God. For there is not like thee, neither is there any God beside. before we start this session will be complete in thee remain standing we're all looking to take those areas of our lives that just don't in our own minds measure up but Jesus with him we are complete and uh, we can fight the Satan and whatever evil is out there because we are complete in Jesus let's sing complete in thee no work of mine complete in thee no work of mine Take dear Lord the place of thine. Thy blood hath bought and bought for me, and I shall stand complete in me. Yea, justified, O oh blessed God, and sanctified salvation. Thy blood hath bought and bought for me. 
Dear Savior, when before thy mark all tribes and tongues assemble are, among thy chosen I shall be at thy right hand completely. I'd like to take, uh, as the next group comes up here, the same special, I would like to just ask you to search your heart right now. We're going to have a word of prayer. Uh, if you would like to come to the altar to pray, you can do that. It's not perfunctory. Let me, you know, Lord bless us. And I really want God to do something. I, I want God to, I, I don't know all you battle. I don't know where your thoughts are. I don't know what's going on in your life, but God does. And I, I really want us to pray. So we're going to take just a moment and we're going to have a word of prayer and, and uh, it'll be a little bit more than a moment. Uh, so we're going to take a few, few minutes. But I'd love for you, if you, again, if you'd like to come to the altar, you can. Uh, but we're going to begin to, to pray now. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Father, we need you. God, we need your spirit. And Lord, just as I'm going to speak about in just a few moments, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? And Father, we need your presence, your wisdom. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you for your patience with us. Lord, we need you day by day just for strength to get through the day sometimes. And Lord, I don't know all the needs that are here, as I just said, but Lord, you do. And I know some may be weary. Some may be discouraged. Some uh, are doing just fine, but they still... As we do, all day, we, we just need to know you and we need to get closer to you than we were yesterday. So, Father, I ask you, please, that you would give us your spirit, that you would move through this room, that you'd touch the lives of these young people, that you'd let, in some cases, that, that there would be a calmness of their heart, that they would relax. And, and, and for some, it's very difficult to meet new people. Some, it's no problem at all, but Lord, I pray you, you help them uh, during this and in, in some ways a difficult time as, as we uh, journey through the next 24 hours. Father, I ask you to just keep your arms around us as a mighty hedge of protection. We de desperately need your protection. This is an evil world. And Lord, every type of temptation is out there. It's unlike anything that we've ever known before. Temptation is at a fingertip. Temptation is at a whisper. And it's, it's, it's horrendous, addictive temptation. It's always there in our face. It's always there trying to grab our attention. And so, Father, I pray that you put a mighty hedge of protection around this group here. And then, Father, I ask you, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you would turn back the evil, the evil one that would try to interfere with what's done here today, and it would his, it'd be his desire to snatch away any truth that might be said before it could take root. So, Lord, bless us now as we yield to thee. 
In Jesus' name, amen. By faith we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design, in the lives of those who prove his faithfulness, who walk by faith and not by sight. faith our fathers roam the earth with the power of his promise in their hearts of a holy city built by God's own hand a place where peace and justice reigns we will stand as children And the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. By faith the prophet saw a day when the long for Messiah would appear with the power. church was called to go in the power of the spirit to the lost to deliver captives and to preach good news in every corner of the earth we will stand as children Souls reward till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. By faith, this mountain shall be moved and the power of shall prevail, for we know in Christ all things are possible, for all who call upon his name, we will stand as children of the promise, we will fix our eyes on him. Souls reward till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on Him, our souls. is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward. 
Till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. We'll walk by faith. We'll walk by faith. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. Now they did a good job, didn't they? Praise the Lord. All right, I want you to go to Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, uh, at 2 o'clock, somewhere thereabouts, we're going to uh, have our meet and greet and have a little bit of, hopefully a little bit of fun. You filled out some papers uh, when you registered, and so we'll be taking a look at some of those things and uh, talking about that in a minute. Uh, I do want to say this uh, uh, so that my wife uh, doesn't divorce me, but... Uh, we have a first aid room, first aid room. It's right out here. You got the coffee shop straight to the back and then the next room over to the left. That's a first aid room. So if you need something and you're not feeling well, uh, I, you know, I prefer not everybody to leave during the sermon. But um, we're equipped to serve also, uh, you know, if you're gluten-free or dairy-free, when we have uh, the supper tonight, uh, that's the South, they call it supper, the... Um, the, when we have it over here, we're having a really nice catered-in meal. Uh, that's, you know, if you wondered what your, your uh, registration fees, that's really helping us to do meals and things like that, have that. And then you have a lunch for you tomorrow that you'll take with you. But, but uh, we're going to have a meal at 5 o'clock, a really nice meal over there, over in the other building. And, and so um, uh, if you're gluten-free, please let them know because they, they've got that prepared for you or will have it. And uh, also, if you, you know, over to the coffee shop, if you want uh, something over there made uh, uh, dairy-free, they can do that for you also. Just make sure that they know, and, they, and they'll get taken care of. The um, other thing is, uh, uh, right now, at uh, 4 o'clock, we're going to go through this meet and greet to about 3.30. We'll take a 30-minute break, and uh, from 3.30 to 4, at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a split session. And we'll show you over, in the, the men are going to go to the next building. And the ladies are going to stay here. My wife is going to be speaking to the, to the ladies over here. Uh, my son-in-law, uh, Michael, uh, has been, you know, he and his wife, Brooke, who is playing the piano, they've been missionaries for 10 years in Africa, three, about three years in, in Germany. And they're going to, Mike's going to be speaking over there uh, to the young man. And that's at uh, 4 o'clock, from 4 to 5. And then at 5 o'clock, we're going to have the dinner at uh, fel the Fellowship Hall in the Educational Building. And then uh, at 6.30 to 7, you know, whenever you really finish dinner, you kind of a break time. There's, there's volleyball out the back if somebody wants to go start to play or do whatever like that if you've got plenty of time. Or if you want to come back over here and get a cup of coffee after dinner, then you can do that. And, but we're going to start back here at 7 o'clock. So at 7 o'clock, now when we get in here, we're going. I mean, we're going to be, we've got three sessions tonight from 7 to 10. And when we finish up at 7 to 10, uh, we're at 10 o'clock. Then we're, we've got an activity time that I think will be a lot of fun. There's gonna, we're going to divide you up into some teams, and uh, we're going to have like four different stations. And you're gonna, some will be playing volleyball, and then uh, they'll move to, uh, we're gonna, you know what knockout is? You know, shooting a basketball, we're doing knockout. And then uh, anybody ever done speed croquet? Have you ever done speed croquet? Yeah. Speed croquet is pretty wild. That's where you, you set up two croquet courses, and then you got two teams, and you got one mallet and one ball. So the first person hits it, and the next person has to take the mallet and run up to it and hit it again, and the next person, and you keep doing that till you go all the way through it and come all the way back, and you're racing the other team. Uh, it, it's great. The best part of it is watching people cheat. Uh, I mean, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and so, and then, how many of you ever done round robin ping pong? 
You know, you get around the ping pong table and you just keep going into the last couple of people and, you know, then you got to spin around and hit it. Even if I get to the last, I just give up. Because <laughs> if I spin around, I'm going down. So, uh, all right. So that's kind of it. Tomorrow morning we start at 9 a.m. And that's kind of important because we're just going to go from 9 to 1 and go pretty much straight on. So, all right. And, um, okay. Anybody got any questions any, before I go? Okay. Luke chapter 11. Look at Luke chapter 11. In verse 1, we're looking at verse 1, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. I'm going to read several verses here, actually, through this whole thing. It says that it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, Jesus, of course, when he seized one of his disciples, said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, most of the time we think, that, you know, the, the prayer or the teaching stops there, but it continues. Look at verse 5, and he says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And, he's, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, he is his he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish... Will he for fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye, ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Father, I pray that you bless these few moments. And, and Father, I do ask for your spirit to guide my mind, to guide my thoughts. Lord, uh, there's nothing I can do to, to help these young people, but, Father, you can. So I'm asking you to speak through me. Shield me from saying anything I shouldn't. But, Father, please bless. Keep that hedge of protection around us and just give strength to, to my body and wisdom to my mind, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there's, there's so many questions right now, especially this year, maybe like no other year in my lifetime, about the future. But the truth is, from what I've been talking and counseling and dealing with people, and we, in some way, shape, or fashion, have worked with this age group for a long time. Uh, we worked with you know, college age for 30 years and worked with military, which are basically the same age uh, there that a lot of you are kind of in that early 20s and some of you are a little later than that. But those questions that we look at in our future, they're being exacerbated by, the, by being alone. And right now, if you are alone, those questions of the future are compounded. The big question always, though, that we always come to is, what's the will of God? What does God really want for my life? What does God want me to do? And why am I where I am? And Lord, if you just show me uh, what's going on here, what's the purpose? Now, this message is, is not primarily about prayer, but the truth revealed that I'm going to talk about hinges on prayer. And I want... I, I just I hope, and it's very, very simple. It's going to be very, very direct. Uh, I almost said it's going to be short, but anytime a preacher says that, you know you're in trouble, right? But it's, this, it's about a friend having a friend. 
It's about a friend being a friend. It's about believing a promise. It's about the father and child relationship. It's about this word importunity, and, and hopefully this will all makes sense here. Importunity has been described often as continually asking. And I'll be honest, when I first heard this preach 40 years ago, I went for many years of just like, Lord, I, I continue asking. I just, I, I've got to ask and 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 ask and, and still walk away feeling like I probably stopped once too short. But what does this really mean? Does it mean continually as you must ask some unknown amount of time forever and then maybe somewhere along the way God will finally say, okay, you finally did it, now you can have the Holy Spirit? Does it mean that you continue to ask over and over again from moment to moment, day by day, in the sense of praying without ceasing? What does he really mean here about the Holy Spirit of God? Now, I want you to understand, the reason I'm going here is because everything else that, that's said, and my, my son-in-law Mike will be speaking, my, my daughter Brooke will be speaking, my wife will be speaking, my son-in-law Dennis, we pray for him right now. They arrived, flew in yesterday, and the and, uh, simple truth is he's, he's not well right now. It's not COVID. Um, and so, uh, uh, even if it was, I wouldn't tell you. But anyway, <laughs> hey, amen. I'm doing, I've been with them all, you know, they were at the house and I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. <coughs> Are y'all doing okay? All right. No. Now, part of me, the meaning of importunity is, per, is the word called pertinacity. Don't you love these words? Who creates these things? Anyway, it's the, it's, that word is a cross between the word pertinent, which means for a specific purpose, and tenacity, which is sticking to a cause. But it's also, in that word, it's an urgent request. It's claiming what has been promised. And it's claiming it with a boldness that expects the promise to be kept. Do you understand what this importunity is? It, it, it's, it's, all, it's, it's a request being made shamelessly. In the sense that you're not embarrassed, uh, for you know what has been promised and who has promised it, and you know his ability to keep his promise, so you come boldly. You come shamelessly to him. It's also a relationship. Now, it's also important to notice that everything in this, in this illustration that Jesus gives, in here, uh, if you'll notice, it all took place on the same night. Okay? It all took, get that in your head. It all took place on the same night. Now, ask, it says that you can ask, seek, and knock. Now, ask is to crave, strongly desire. How many of you would really just love to know what God has for you in the future? Okay, the rest of you that just don't care. And like a third of you, it went. <laughs> now, do the rest of you even care about the future? Okay, let me try again. How many of you would love to know what God has for you in the future? Thank you. I mean, you just did that to please me, but uh, we got half of you anyway, so I feel better. But you, look, I mean, the truth is, all of us do. Even at this point, I'd like to know what God's got for me for the future. <laughs> I'd like to know I have one. <laughs> you know, I'm at that stage of the game, Lord, Lord do I? Uh, I'd like to know. I'd like to know what God has for the future. You, you really, it's inside of us, God. What, now, especially as a Christian, we want to know, God, I want to know what you want so I can do what you want. I think that's why most of you are here, it, well, you know, no, I think most of you are here to meet somebody. But then, it, <laughs> no, ask means to crave, to strongly desire. Do you desire to know God? 
Seek is also a word that means to crave, but it's to begin the process of asking. So asking is just the, is the desire. It's inside of you. It's that beginning where inside the desire starts to churn. Seeking is when you put feet to it. Seeking is when you begin the process. It's going from the desire to seek God to the beginning, the process of seeking him. It's starting to put action to your words. Knock. It's a, it to us is a word that can mean... Uh, uh, you know, to us, knock could be, anybody here ever been soul winning? Okay. I know knock to us could mean the soul winning knock. Guess nobody's here. How many of you have been down that road? Okay, I'm done with mine. You take it. Okay. I said, man, I didn't even hear that. How are they going to hear that? But that's not this kind of knock. Amen? Watch this. In reality, knock means a blow, a stroke with something thick or heavy. That means you need to knock with your head. Okay? No. It means I want to wake up everybody in the house. My need is great. You have the answer, and I'm not going to go away until I get it. It's like, hey! Hey! You know what that comes from? It's a desire, an intense craving that you just got to have it. In this, in this parable, in this story, this illustration Jesus gives, what he's saying is, he says, he likens it all to, he says, uh, that the evil parents will give, and all the illustrations are about food. And because we crave food. If you don't have it after a while, I mean, if you go long enough, you really are dying. For, I went over to my, uh, uh, Sherry went and got my daughter. I had a daughter over here and a daughter over here. And, and this one flew in last night and she was rushing this morning and she didn't get to eat. And and Sherry's an old friend, and so Sherry went and got her something to eat, and, and I forgot to tell her, and it's in the refrigerator. And so I walked over, and I said, you know what? I forgot to tell you. In a bag in my refrigerator is the food, and, and so you can get it after this. And she looked at me, and she said, oh, don't worry. I will. <laughs> she was, she's craving that food, and God says that's, that's the way we ought to want to crave him, hunger for him. I must first have a true desire for God's Holy Spirit. Then I must begin the process by finding a place and time to ask. Then I must knock in boldness that only faith can give. You know what, you, when you really believe, do you believe this book? When you really believe what God has said, that's why you can come boldly. It's not because we're something perfect. It's because what he said he'd do, he will do. So we come boldly. God, you got to keep your words. You promised it. Hebrews 4, 15, 16 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You know, God, and there's a purpose behind everything I'm saying. It'll come to the very end. God wants us to come to him boldly, but he wants us to crave him. He wants us to desire him. So this is about faith. It's about about a desire that comes from a sincere need. How many of you are doing just fine by yourself? Or would you say, you know, it'd be kind of nice if I had some help going through what I'm going through in life right now? It's about acting on that desire. Do you know, if you get hungry, again, some of the folks here, you know, came registered at 11, and, and uh, I was talking to Mike over here, and and I, I told them, I said, you know, if they want to, they register at 11, you know, then it can run down here, you know, Chick-fil-A is down here, you know, it's about a mile, and you can go get something to eat. Oh, no, we'll just hang around here. About 30 minutes later, we're going to get a sandwich. <laughs> you know, and Chick-fil-A has got this incredible drive through Do you know what I mean? They got this drive through 
and that you're supposed to be like a mile and a half and it'll get you through in three minutes, which is not true. But anyway, <laughs> but you get hungry and you get up and you head to the drive through but when you get there, you don't sit quietly outside the little mechanism out there. And they say, Chick-fil-A, can I help you? Chick-fil-A, can I help you? Anybody do that? Try it. It'd be fun, actually. <laughs> Somebody will come out there. Now, the fact is, is that you don't do that. You order, right? Am I making anybody hungry right now? Well, don't worry. We're eating at five. <laughs> now, I don't have great faith when I go through a drive through especially in Memphis, that I'm going to get what I order or that I'm going to get it today. <laughs> but when I pull up to God's drive through I can have faith that he's going to do what he said. All I have to do is ask. So it's about believing the promise, promise of God. It's about a relationship. He said that earthly fathers, being evil, they'll give good gifts to their kids. My children know that if, I think they believe this, if it's in my physical power to meet a need that they have, I'll do that. Now, i got 26 grandkids. I'm not making that promise to them. <laughs> Where'd Tori go? God bless you. Even though you're number one, you still lose. Uh, no, I mean... If it's in my power, I used to say all the time when I preached, my dad was alive. I would say to him, you know, I live 500 miles from him, but I, just, I would tell people if, if I had a need, I firmly believed that if I called my dad, if he had to start walking to try to get to me, he would. Because I believe he loved me that much as an earthly father. God says, if you're his child, he is your father. And it's not just he'll answer. He says, how much more shall the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? How much more? Now, understand me, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, going to get spooky here with the Holy Spirit. And this is, you know, you're thinking, okay, where's he going to go with this? Listen, folks, we're, we, he was left here to help us. To teach us, to guide us, to direct us. But we spend our whole life doing it alone. Even as Christians. We would have a work done out, out here. And look, I, I'm, not a, I'm not above it. God convicted me. I, we were having some work done out here, and, and, uh, and I had to make a decision about something. And, and, and I called one of the men in the church to kind of get his advice about it. And, and then I made the decision about it. And, and no sooner than I made the decision, then it's like the, the Holy Spirit said, didn't want to ask me. And I had spent, I spent some time in prayer just saying, Father, I'm sorry. I don't know how long it's going to take me to learn. When am I going to get this? You were there available for me to ask, to teach me. All right, I'm about done because one of the few times in my life I'm going to be on schedule. It's a relationship. And it says, if the earthly, fleshly fathers desire to give to their children, how much more shall the heavenly father give to his children? Are you his child? Let 
We prayed before you got here, and one of my prayers were, Lord, if there happened to be one here that really doesn't know for sure they're going to heaven, help them to know that before they leave. Do you desire God's Spirit? Do you crave Him? Are you willing to act upon your desire in faith? Then it just simply means come boldly. Come and knock boldly. Not in pride or arrogance, but in confidence that God will do just what he said he would do. You know, I found out I, I, I spent much of my life, too much, of my Christian life, I would pray because I was supposed to. I would pray because it was scheduled. I would pray because it was part of what you were, were to do as a Christian. But I'd pray in doubt that God won't hear me. Even in our early married life and the ministry out there, Mike, God did so many things. Mike and Andy, so many miracles. I mean, we had nothing. Six kids, and we would be housing sailors on the weekend, and, and uh, six, eight, 10, 12, 15 of them, and no groceries. And so many times, man, there would be groceries at the door. And so many times, God blessed. And Making $11,000 a year with six kids, right? God bless, they gave us a down payment for a house and gave us a home and, and it was just so we could house those sailors and, and so many things. But I'll be honest with you, so much of the time, I'd feel like God was answering my wife. Not me. Because I knew how weak and unworthy I was. It took me a long time to get to the point where I realized this is not about my perfection. It's about him being my father. And he said as his child, I can come to him and I can ask him and he said, how much more would he answer me? How much more would he give me his spirit? And I began to ask in faith. Because this wasn't based on me. It was based on his promise. It was based on who he was, not who I was. Why is this so important? And I'm done. This is really the whole message. I want, over the next 23 hours, I want desperately for you to open your heart up and believe God. Believe God has an answer for whatever you're dealing with. Believe God knows your future and has, has everything, steps ordered out. Believe God wants to hear you when you ask him. Believe God wants to meet your every need. You see, because if we ask, seek, and knock by faith, I think we give two results. And it's more than this, but these two that I want to give you, I think might be a help to you. They were a help to me. First of all, if... God gives me his spirit, and he said he would. 
He didn't say he's going to give his spirit to a perfect child. He said he'd give it to his child. He said, well, it doesn't say his child. He says to them that ask, well, let me just help you. He's just talking about a father and a child before the illustration. So he's talking still about father and a child. He said he gives you his spirit. Now, if he gives you his spirit, it's so simplistic, but listen to this. What do people want more, most right now? What do many of you right here, even if you don't understand it, don't realize it, what you want is you'd love to have joy in your life as it is if it never changed. You'd at least like to just have joy. And you'd like to have peace. Peace that if God changes your status or peace if God doesn't. And here's what the scripture says. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, and peace. The fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. That means for some of you, you feel like this has been going on longer than you want it to. Now, I understand some of you, life's a party. And you're enjoying that party. I understand also that some of you feel like if God doesn't hurry up and do something, you're going to miss the party. And somebody in here, you might already feel like you already missed the party. But God will give you peace in the state that you're in right now. Because he said he would. Because the fruit of the Spirit. So why not ask him, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? And the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. And here's the second thing. I really believe most of us just desperately want to know God's will for our life. And John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Do you know, if he's going to teach you all things, I think part of all things is what's God's will for your life. And I have a whole message on how, how to find God's will for your life. But truthfully, it starts by having the Holy Spirit in your life. How much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? I'd love for us to start this conference off just being willing to push out the doubt out of our head and by faith ask God for his spirit. When I said that, somebody in here thought, that's not going to work for me. Or I've tried that. Let me tell you, if you don't feel like God has given you his spirit, and understand, I'm talking salvation, the Holy Ghost of God comes in you to live in you. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. I, that's, this is, we're talking about the Holy Spirit giving you strength and wisdom and guidance and direction and teaching in your life right now, day by day. Don't believe the lie that he would not give. Old Satan will tell you, well, not me. Oh, yes, you, if you're his child. Just ask him. That's all he said. I'm going to give us opportunity. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. You're too new to each other. You're too um, inhibited right now. After our meet and greet, that'll all be over. <laughs> but I am going to pray, and I'd love for you. Just tell us, 
Satan, to get out of your head, I'm not believing your lies anymore. I'm believing God. And how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you bless. Dear God, I pray, I believe, I know that if we would truly have your spirit, if we would truly know and believe your word, that we could by faith come to you as a child Lord, we're not satisfied with our imperfection, but we are imperfect and we know that. But we're still your child. And Father, we come to you and asking you for your spirit. For with your spirit comes wisdom, with your spirit comes understanding, and with your spirit comes boldness and with your spirit comes direction and guidance and teaching and love and, and, and peace and joy and long suffering and oh God you just pour out your spirit unto us please Lord do that for somebody here today I ask him to do it Lord I pray I'm just going to give you I'm going to stop just be silent for a few moments and you give you the opportunity to pray yourself and talk to the Lord yourself. Father, thank you for giving us a plan, giving us a teaching about how to pray. Thank you that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray and taught us how to pray. Thank you for this wonderful illustration about the Spirit of God, about it being a friend and going for bread for a different friend. But what's so important is just believing how much you want to answer. How much you want to give us that bread. Please bless uh, over the next few hours we have together. I pray that it, it will be fruitful and I pray that it will be worthwhile for, the, for those that have come, please. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, we have now a meet and greet, but uh, anybody here, is it, before we meet and greet, you would rather uh, take like you know, a five-minute break? <laughs> okay, we're going yeah, to take about a uh, seven-minute break. We're going to be back here at 2.15, 2.15. Now, if you're already discouraged and disappointed, Come back anyway. All right. All right. Let's take a break.